Go ahead. So we've been taking these large trees that we've been finding all over the native range and collecting pollen. And this photo right here, I had a friend of mine in Tennessee taught me years ago how to save chestnut pollen. And you have to go through a process, you dry it, and then you can, um, once you do it correctly, you can freeze it. It's good for decades. So I can take that pollen the following year, go to trees like this one on the lower left. These are female flowers on Ozark chinka pan ready to be pollinated. And we can uh, pollinate them and put a bag on like I've got on the right so no other pollen gets in there. Then we can create these crosses. Sometimes we'll travel for two or 300 miles with pollen going to different trees. And in, in nature, it would have happened if it would have taken thousands of years. So we're repeating that process by doing this, taking pollen going. And today, you can get airplane fly up. You know, we got rogues, shopping malls, towns. And so the woods aren't continuous anymore. So we're doing something that couldn't have happened today. So we're taking these rare trees, hundreds of miles apart, crossing them. Then when we're crossing them, we're finding out some pretty interesting stuff. And my daughter, Leslie, who went to school here at Elsinore, uh, is real important. So this is in Carter County right here. This is a tree growing on real rocky, dry ground. And this is an Ozark chinkapin, not a chinkapin oak. It's really easy to be confused with. Well, it came from, I went on the internet. And There's when I did it, yeah, it, so yeah. yeah. And, I, and so that's why it's good for us to talk about it though. And if Matthew hadn't said that, I didn't know it. So um, chinkapin oak are real rugged too. They'll grow on dry, rocky places. And chinkapin oaks will live to be 300 years old, 350. You can tear a great big limb off of it. And those things will keep right on growing and they grow on glades. The, the Ozark chinkapin is real drought tolerant too, but usually they won't grow on a glade that's too dry there. They'll grow right above it, mm -hmm. like about 40 yards up in the woods above a glade. And that's where this is at. And uh, that tree right there is uh, one of those places where we planted seed at. And um, so Leslie, our daughter, has been doing some amazing stuff. She found a way, working with a lab in New York, that you can actually inoculate a leaf and it's a good predictor about how resistant that tree is. So we've been taking our trees and testing them. And if you look right down below right here, um, see that little bitty dot of red? Uh -huh. uh, she cut out a little, a little punch uh, it's real detailed work to do this and put blight in both of those leaves. The one on the bottom is one of our cross trees and the one on the top is an American chestnut leaf that gets the blight. And we have trees right now that are not only high resistant, they're more resistant than Castania melissima, the Chinese chestnut, and also higher resistance, and this is what the lab in New York found out, than that transgenic uh, Darling 58 American chestnut that they genetically modified. They spent thousands and thousands of dollars making that tree. And what we've done right here in Missouri and Arkansas in shoestring is more resistant than it. We have, have you know, very limited money. And, uh, you know, you take a donation like Matthew gives us, that's what we've been doing this stuff. So Leslie did, does this work at, at Missouri Botanical Garden in St. Louis. I didn't know that's where she worked. And guess what? She doesn't work there. She's done work. Oh, she's done, her she does there, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And guess what? She just got through getting a salary. I think I told you that from that guy at St. Louis. He's a conservationist and businessman. Out of his own pocket, paid her a salary to do this. So let's just set up a graph right here. If you look at the right, that red bar, that's the American chestnut, and they're real susceptible to black. That's what wiped them out. Mm -hmm. And so um, that yellow one in the middle, that's Chinese chestnut that has high resistance to the black. Mm -hmm. Everything to the left is trees that we have created that have high resistance to the black, even the Chinese. This is our native tree, and this is what Matthew's got growing on his property too. These trees that will not get the black, they'll die of drought, or they'll die of something else before uh, they die of the blight. And this is incredible. And the American Chestnut Foundation has been trying to do this for you know about 30 years. And they had to go to genetic modification to make it work. They tried to cross American chestnuts with Chinese chestnuts, and they just found out about two years ago the genes aren't compatible and the trees are sterile and won't make nuts. Oh. So their hope is that this uh, genetically modified, where they took a gene from wheat 
and put into it, it gives it resistance to the blight. We don't do that. We've got native trees that are pure. They have not been changed whatsoever, ever. And so for over 15 years of field and laboratory work, our mission's been to create a blight resistant Ozark chinka pen and preserve the genetic diversity of the native range. And success, we did it. <laughs> It's taken a lot of work, but we've done it. And so our recovery action plan is find surviving trees, collect the pollen, do DNA testing, preserve genetic diversity of the native range, cross-pollinate surviving trees, and uh, inoculate the finished ones with the blight, which we've done, then science and genetics and hypovirulence, and then raise public awareness like what we're doing at this meeting and outreach and education, raise money for the project and dedicate locations in and out of the Black Range, and, and Matthew's got a place on Crowley's Ridge we got to grow one too. And let's see, uh, see the Ozark Chinka Pen Foundation members for reintroduction and expand the restoration to state and federal agencies. And this last year, we've really done that. We've got an agreement with the U.S. Forest Service now and with uh, Arkansas State Parks, and we're working, of course, with MDC and then uh, uh, Arkansas Game and Fish Commission just recently. And there's a uh, will up by a tree up, up here in Carter County. And so we're a nonprofit organization, outdoors men and women, with the vision of restoring those are chinka pen He's back. He's well there. A native he's range. He's taller than that tree now. He's 6'1". Yeah. yeah, he's grown uh, quite a bit. And through our efforts and those of hundreds of volunteers like Matthew the last decade were able to attempt establishing viable seed base through research and manual cross-pollination surviving trees. Our goal is to develop 100% pure Ozark chinka pen that's blight resistant and distribute the seed to everyone interested in helping. I need to change that that we have. And uh, so that tree he's standing in front of right now is 31 feet tall today. He's not taller than that tree. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he's a big kid. He's taller than it used to be. And so yeah. this is at Hobbs State Park in Arkansas, one of our meetings that we had back in 2011. And um, and this just goes to show all the incredible work. There's people in this picture from Connecticut, from Washington State. Uh, there's Terry Cunningham that was with uh, Pioneer Forest. He's retired now. And uh, uh, just a lot of really good stuff. So what have we learned from the laboratory and field work? Um, so this is a Missouri buck. Have you seen this picture, Matt? No. Uh, I, this is on one of our cameras, and it's near Current River. It's one, not two, here. three, it's four, five, six. Here. There's no way you could uh, possibly reveal eight. its location. No. I've had a lot of, when the gamekeepers did that podcast, I sent them some pictures of this. And they're like, where is that deer at? I said, somewhere along 130 miles or Current River Valley. And I've never seen one with two drop times like that. And uh, so the wildlife loves them, um, and it's a magnet for wildlife. Here's the blight spread uh, before it reaches the Ozarks. And the chinka pins were growing, by the way, all over the United States. We found out that, um, that they were also in Georgia, they were in North and South Carolina, Tennessee, Illinois has got them. We found five places in Illinois, and they're in Kansas, Northeast Kansas. And I mean, we've got verified surveys of people that own the property and have them there, they use as their, their boundary for their yep. property. And, uh, but the, they're all gone because of the blight. And they're even in Virginia and Pennsylvania, of all things. In fact, the American Chestnut Foundation, one of their best trees in their breeding program, they said it was American Chestnut, is an Ozark chinka pen they mistakenly thought was American Chestnut. And so this butterfly up here on the left, this is called a King's Hair Street butterfly. It, there's, it's so rare, um, it, it's, I think only about 30 have been found in the United States since the 1920s. It feeds exclusively on the nectar of chinka pins and chestnuts and on, um, uh, what's that one, sirewood, which it doesn't grow west of the Mississippi River except for one little place in Louisiana. And there's a lady that works with us, found one of these in 2008 in Arkansas at Mount Magazine. And with them feeding on the nectar of a chinka pin, see that increases the pollination of it. Until then, scientists said, oh, they're all wind pollinated. That's not true. You see that bee over here on the lower right? That's called a chestnut bee. 
since the 1920s, they thought it was extinct. Guess what? I sent some seed up to Connecticut years ago. They've got chinkapins growing there, and an entomologist found that bee on a chestnut, on a chinkapin bloom. Those aren't chinkapin in Connecticut. And it made all the news. They, couldn't, they thought it was gone from planet Earth, and there it was. So guess what? This year we did studies trying to see if we could find it, and I hadn't got the results back. This is one branch on the end of a tree, and it had 47 nuts on it. And this is what you're going to be in for. And there's one of the plots that I planted. Uh, uh, this one's in Carter County. I've got some in Shannon, and Carter, and Dent, and uh, Butler County. And so just clear a place and then plant the trees. These trees in this picture right now are between 27 and 34 feet tall. And uh, so it's a lot of hard work doing all this, creating a blight resistant tree. And so, so here's another study right here. I think Matt, you saw this one. So growing up, I always was told the white oak, that second tree was the number one wildlife food in the woods because it had real high protein it didn't have a lot of tannic acid in it, so it's 4.6% protein, 46% carbohydrates. And then below that, I got scarlet oak, uh, which has a little bit more fat than the American chestnut. And I got this from the guy with the American Chestnut Foundation that does all their studies on protein analysis. This is what he gave me over the phone. Well, look at our native one up here, the Ozark Chica pen. 15.2%, and it's over three times more than what a white oak acre has and over double of what an American chestnut has. And that 61%, that's why they taste so sweet. They have so much, um, you know, um, not just proteins, uh, but carbohydrates. That's where you get your fats and your sugars at. And look at the fat in it, too. Yeah. I mean, it is, and look at the trace minerals. It is off the hook in trace minerals. And magnesium is a real important trace mineral for good human health and it is off the hook on that. This is our native tree. So